Welcome to the Gamers Inn. Come on in, pull up a chair next to the fire. It looks like you've had a long journey. I'm your host, Jocelyn, and joining me as always is my co-host, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hi. I played another depressing game this week, Jocelyn. Oh, no. You have to stop doing that, man. <laughs> you know, I just they say it's, it's game of the generation, then it's like, this is just sad, guys. Animal Crossing is treating you that badly. Does someone keep stealing your cherries? You know, you let... You let Cowboy into your town, and he chops down all your... Ch no, I'm just joking. You didn't do that. He's really nice. Um, he actually gave me uh, uh, oranges. Nicest guy you could ever have in your town. Hooray. Nice I guess oranges are, are hard to come by, or... Oh, yeah. I mean, Animal Crossing's weird. Um, oranges, there's a bunch of fruit in the game, and fruit is sort of like your easiest way of making money. And you don't make money, you make what they call bells. And uh, <laughs> my town started with peaches, and that hence the jokes we were having uh, last week with Scott about he needed bananas for some reason. Right. Um, Jocelyn thought we were talking in code, but uh, yeah. Anyways, um, I started with peaches, and they and uh, fruit local to your town sells for a hundred bells a pop. Well, fruit from other towns sells for five hundred bucks a pop. Whoa! So you want to get as many foreign fruit in your town as possible. But the great thing about this Animal Crossing game is that once you've gone through the whole friend code thing, I'm sure you've noticed on Twitter, people just... Everyone's been spewing numbers and letters everywhere. <laughs> yeah, just number, like, 12-digit numbers just coming out of everybody's at replies. And uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was interesting. I mean, I, I think I have more friends on my 3DS than I do on my Xbox now, which is crazy considering how hard it is to get friends registered. Yeah. Um, but, All just uh, for oh, this yeah. one Animal Crossing game? <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, it'll be interesting interesting to see how um, how much of a hold it has on the community. But right now, it it is kind of like the fire is there and people are just having a blast with it. Hmm. Um, and I and never, that's why I never really got into it or saw the appeal. Mm -hmm. I tried it twice on two different platforms. I tried it on. The GameCube, I believe, and then was there one for the Wii? There was, yeah, there was one for the Wii. Because I was going to say, I'm like, I'm certain I've tried it twice, and both times I tried it, I was kind of like, eh, I don't get it. Which is kind of funny, <laughs> because I mean, like, I play The Simpsons, I play, you know, simulation games, I play The, the Sims, I play, like, pr I pretty much just stopped short of Farmville, which yeah. this is, that's totally the feeling I got out of Animal Crossing is it's just Farmville. <laughs> it's weird. Convince I was thinking me about... otherwise. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I don't know if I could. I mean, like, what what fun stuff do you do in the game? Well, today is, as we know, summer solstice, right? That's true. And um, Animal Crossing is, is neat how they have these in-game events based on real-world uh, dates. Like, wow! Like, wow. <laughs> I mean, uh, there are no trolls in this game, unless someone, again... That you again, know of. Well, I was just going to say, there are trolls if you let someone into your game with an axe and they decide to chop down. I'm not bitter. That <laughs> happened in the GameCube days. I I played with my brothers. Uh, I have three brothers, and we all... Uh, the memory card supported four people, and we all played in the same town, and I came back from school one day and found all my trees were chopped down, and my there's weeds everywhere, and I'm like, guys, do your chores, and stop cutting down the fruit trees. <sighs> but, uh, uh, yeah... It, it, it's funny, like, when you talk about this game, it's it's hard to tell what's fun because there's no <laughs> goals. The goals are you have a mortgage and you have to pay it off to this, like, stupid You're raccoon. really, really not selling it to me, man. <laughs> I don't know if I'm you trying. To, wait, to whoa, whoa, wait. You have to what? pay a raccoon? <laughs> yeah, Tom Nook. He is the... Uh, bane of my existence in that game. Basically what he does is, the way the game starts, it's actually got an interesting sort of premise. You arrive in this town uh, as a newcomer and you're just moving there for some reason and you find out that you're going to be the mayor. And <laughs> you'd think that you would find out you're going to be the mayor before you get there. But you know what? It's Animal Crossing. It doesn't need to make sense. And you become the mayor and that sort of sets up some of the cooler features in this in this game as opposed to the other ones where you were sort of stuck with your town and it was all of the towns were the same, except for maybe some randomly generated, like, cliffs and shit. But uh, in this one, you upgrade your, your house by uh, talking to Tom Nook, and he says, oh, I'll give you a house. That'll be 50,000 bells. Okay. You pay that off, and he says, great. 
now wouldn't you like to make it bigger? And I say yes, because I've, I've got like a Metroid uh, thing, a Triforce. This is my, my house is cluttered with Nintendo crap. <laughs> um, so you cause... can buy decorations? Yeah, you you the whole point of the game in terms of the, your house is to to kind of decorate it in a way that gives you a high score within the um happy house insert Nintendo alliteration here organization and uh they uh they rate your house based on your decorations and feng shui and they say like oh <laughs> yellow to the west is good and green to the south is good and it's like shit really? I just want to find a yeah no really <laughs> It's fun. Uh, <laughs> trust me. It's cool because, uh, yeah, and when you pay off your, your mortgage, you go into Tom Nook and he says, oh, well, you know, we'll do expansions. Here's your new debt. And that's sort of the goal. There's not like, you know. If the you goal is to go further into debt? No, no, no. The goal is that's sort of your overarching it goal. It sounds like life crossed with debt. Farmville crossed with SimCity. Yeah, but the difference <laughs> is that there's no payments. So Tom Nook don't break your legs when you miss a payment. There is no payments. You just kind of pay whenever you want. I mean, technically... So then can... why would you ever pay? You want an upgrade. Oh, you can't upgrade until... Yeah. Because otherwise yeah. I'd just be like, dude, give me the biggest mansion you got. Let's do this thing. No, well, I'm not of... paying you. Because that would be dumb. <laughs> then I'd yeah. have no bells. <laughs> I have a bells and a mansion. Why? Why? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, and he's a raccoon. What does he know? But, uh, you know, just tip a tip a garbage can in front of him and run away like he's not coming at <laughs> Um Someone on Twitter had said that it's 7.6 million bells to get all the upgrades on your house. And that's a lot of bells? peaches, Jocelyn. <laughs> yeah, bells. They couldn't say dollars. It's trademarked it probably. Um, probably not. But I was going to say, I don't think you can trademark dollars. <laughs> if yeah, you can't but... trademark gold, then... <laughs> no, or gill. Gill, actually, I think would be trademarked mm. in that sense, but... Uh, yeah, the the game, that's the overarching sort of goal mechanics, but really, like, it's just sort of a game that you're supposed to play a half hour to an hour each day, you know, kind of go so around. So they're like dailies, and wow, it's an entire game made up of wow dailies. That's a great way of putting it. Like, so today is the summer solstice, so today I'm going to, you know, hit up the festival. I'm going to stay up till midnight because it's supposed to be like a day all day until midnight. And, uh... You know, uh, tomorrow, uh, turnips Turnips is sort of like the market. It's like, like like the stock market. So on Sundays, I know tomorrow's not Sunday. But when <laughs> this goes live, it'll be Saturday. So tomorrow is Sunday. Um, on Sundays, you go buy a bunch of turnips at a set price. And then throughout the week, you go to the shop and sort of see what the turnip prices are. And you sell high when you try to. Uh, and sometimes you have to sell low because you miss a high price. But Do your turnips go bad? Yes. After a week, they do go bad. Okay. And 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 I've had that horror story uh, where I had like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of be uh, worth of turnips in my inventory. And oh, I, why wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I forgot to actually sell them on a Saturday, and I came in on Sunday, and I'm like crying over my GameCube, just tears flowing onto my GameCube controller because I forgot to sell my turnips. I'm surprised you didn't smash it, <laughs> poor oh, Xbox no. controller. <laughs> I just forgot about that. There's no way in hell I'm smashing any new controllers in the next gen. Those things look oh, expensive. Man, yeah. <laughs> um, but this game is jam-packed, and, and to sit here and sort of explain, like, all the little things you can do in it, like, that's the beauty of the game is that every day there's something new to do. So today I spent a lot of time kind of running around town talking to people and doing errands, and the dialogue's really quirky. But tomorrow I might just go in and fish. There's a fishing daily. You just collect all the fish in the game. <laughs> and, um, you know, the next day I might just go around catching bugs. So it really depends. And multiplayer mm. sort of is just like a chat room, kind of. Okay. You get to go to your friend's town and kind of look at their houses and stuff. It's it's worth the price of admission for, for 35 It's like 35 bucks, I think. Um, but I know you'd have to buy the 3DS. But... Yeah. Everybody's playing it, Jocelyn. I know everybody's playing it. I, I was standing, I would have bought it today. Oh. If they had a refurbished XL. They had a refurbished 3DS, but not a refurbished 3DS XL at the uh, at EB. So I was what's just... What's a refurbished cost in terms of a cost difference? Uh, it's about 30 bucks cheaper than the regular version, so... It's, it's enough of a drop that it makes me go, okay, yeah, that just... It, that 
makes it a no brainer for me because with that thirty dollars I can go buy a game. And then it's like getting a free game along with my XL. So I mean I still although I mean I was standing in E V with Ocarina of Time three D in my hands and Joel's oh. just like it was it was used, it was uh I think fifteen bucks and I was just like ah, look he He's just like those first of all those aren't words. Second of all, you don't own that system. Just just put it back. Just put, it's and I was like, but 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 <laughs> It's fantastic, that game. Of course it is. It's freaking uh, Zelda. <laughs> well not only that, like th- that's one of the best Zelda games to ever come out and th- Obviously they think... keep remaking it for every single system they put out. <laughs> but the difference like the difference between this version, again, <laughs> hold on to your seats, Ryan's gonna defend Nintendo. Um, the graphics actually are, are given a nice facelift, and I don't think we've ever gotten that with, uh, That's true. with that Zelda game, and it really helps. I know, like, it's, uh, it doesn't look much from the screenshots, but if you do compare, there is a difference, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, no, a- Animal Crossing is great, and you'll, it's sort of a, a slow burn. You can't, you can't go in there, like, the first day I got it was on a Sunday, and I, I couldn't boot it up till Sunday night. And I'm in there, and, like, all the shops are closed. All I could do... Hell, I didn't even have a house. I had a freaking tent and a lantern. <laughs> and Tom Nick's... Tom Nick... Tom Nook's <laughs> store was uh, closed, so I couldn't even, like, say, hey, build your mayor a freaking house. So it's not a game you can go in and play, like, 12 hours and beat it. It's, like, a half hour each day slow burn thing. And, mm. and the multiplayer is cool, and... I'd be really interested to if you did get it to kind of, and you do a lot of commuting, right? I do. So uh, the 3DS, I don't know if you're familiar, has this thing called Street Pass, and what it is I is I think uh, you've talked about it before. Isn't it, that the kind of thing that it just randomly lets you play with people you're physically near? Well, not ra- it's more anonymously in the sense that it's uh, except for you're the only two dudes on the bus playing with the 3DS. <gasps> I wonder who it could be. <laughs> but you're not you're not playing with them. Well, what I do is I walk to work every day and I throw the 3DS in my backpack, leave it on, and then as I'm walking through town, the 3DS will pick up other 3DSs and exchange data, right? Just anonymously. Um, so like I was walking home one day and I got home and I was like, oh, I got a Street Pass with so and so. And the way Street Pass works in in each game is different. And in Animal Crossing, um, there's a whole section dedicated to Street Pass houses. So when you walk by someone, you get that their Animal Crossing data, like what they have in their house and what their character looks like. So you can go into that showcase, go into their town, and look at all their... Cut down all their trees? No. Well, sorry, you can't look at their town. You look at their house, Mm. and you kind of look at all their items and say, uh, man, this is really cool. And then you can actually order those items um, in the sense of uh, common items. Like, there are rare Nintendo items you can only get using, like, lottery tickets each day. And... Jocelyn, I have a Triforce in my house and a hat that makes me look like Link. So it's the pretty much... You're pretty much set. I I don't know why you don't just put the game away because you've already won. Well, I'm waiting for the Master Sword and um, possibly... uh, Well, no, I did. I got Peach's Paracel, so I might be set, you know, at this point. I feel like that is actually something that would get me in is the collectibles thing. The, you know, like either something that I have to do over and over and over again to get something or, you know, like in terms of like, you know, farming peaches gets me peaches dress or something mm-hmm. or, you know, like uh, something like that or something like the lottery thing where I have to go to a certain location, buy something and try every day to win something randomly, then yeah, yeah that would be both of those things for collectibles. Yeah, I can totally see myself doing that. It, it gets me to boot it up every day. I, like I'll, the first thing I do is, is I save up, uh, play coins which are sort of built up using the pedometer on the 3ds and i go in there and this the first thing i do is get my nintendo item and be like where the hell am i going to put this thing so my house is literally i apologize to anybody who <laughs> who got my house or was visiting my town and tried to go around in my house to look at all the cool stuff you can't because it's just filled with stuff like i haven't did you not yeah. feng shui uh, properly <laughs> i'm waiting I, I need an upgrade to my house i should have an upgrade tomorrow that is going to make it bigger, so I should be able to rearrange things so I can kind of, you can kind of get around my Nintendo museum. <laughs> um, and the really cool, like, one more thing about the Nintendo items, 
they do so well with these things. Like when you put on a hat, it plays like the Zelda chime or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when you like touch the Metroid, it starts playing like the Metroid music. And when you touch the uh, Star Fox thing, it makes this the music. It's just really cool. And it's... Well, it's because they're all first-party things, you know? Like, they're yeah. all Nintendo properties, and everybody loves them, and that is why people love Nintendo, is because of their IP, so... <laughs> why wouldn't they... they be like, look at all the things we have, guys? Look what oh, we did for you. <laughs> but it still doesn't make up for the fact that they still haven't put the NES games back in there. Uh, I don't know if you remember on the GameCube, you could actually get NES games in Animal Crossing and play them. Um, I didn't. I think I played for a day or two, and I literally oh. was running around. And I was just like, "What the heck is the point of this game? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? Where are my quests? What? Are, where am I going?" <laughs> Turns out, nowhere to do nothing. <laughs> exactly. You could do nothing. You could just go down to the beach and pick up seashells. That would and be doing it, something. It would. Well, that's true. <laughs> you could just dig holes everywhere. Um, it's a lot of fun, and I know a lot of people are having a good time with it, so you better jump on the it bandwagon seems... now. I know. I'm worried that by the time I end up getting it, even if I get it in time for Nurtacular and for flying down to Utah and stuff, that everyone will be over it, because that's what happens. Like, I mean, it happened with Draw Something. It happened with um, The Simpsons somewhat tapped out. Um, it happened to... I'm trying to think of something else. But all of these mobile type games where, you know, you play with your friends and you have certain things you have to do every day and everything else, like eventually it just becomes a grind and everybody drops it. And that usually happens three weeks to a month. You know, it comes out, everybody goes, oh my god, I love a thing and you totally have to play this thing. And then you play and you play and you play. Hero Academy, that's another one. Although I still play with Chad every once in a while, but Hero oh. Academy is another one. Where, you know, like, it's, oh my god, everybody's playing, this thing is so amazing! And then, like, everybody drops off, except for, like, people where that is now their mobile game. So if all you're ever gonna play is Animal Crossing, then that's probably what you're gonna stick with, and you're not gonna pick up Tapped Out or Hero Academy or anything else, you know? So, I don't know, I feel like if I wait another two weeks until Utah, two weeks till Utah, then, oh um... <laughs> you know, it's going to be, I, it, no one's going to be playing it anymore, and then I'm just going to be standing in the middle of my town with baskets of fruit going, come on guys, come buy my fruit! <laughs> no one will buy my fruit. Well, I mean, you're talking to the person who, who plays games way before they become, un or way after they become oh. uncool. I mean, I played Pokemon for at least too many games afterwards when it dropped off, like... Mm. You See, know. that's the thing. I absolutely love Battle Pets. If they made mobile mm -hmm. Battle Pets, I would play that all the time. And that's the same sort of thing. You do something kind of grindy to try to collect all of the things and have all of the pets so that your collection's complete. I like collections. I like games that let me collect things. So, especially if there are rare things, which, I mean, if there's no rare things, then what's the point of collecting? But, anyways. <laughs> well, I have good news. They announced uh, they announced mobile Pokemon. It's Pokemon X and Y for the 3DS, so buy a 3DS Aww. today. <laughs> I'm just joking. Well, that new Pokemon does look cool. It might suck me back in, but, uh, yeah, like... Worst case scenario, I'll still be playing, so you can sell your fruit in my town, I guess. And we are talking <laughs> I about guess animals. I'll take your cherries, Jocelyn. <laughs> you make me. I need bananas, and I'm pretty sure that's it. Like, I have cherries, apples, oranges, and peaches. And I've, I've heard of the elusive banana. And uh. I think that's it. I don't <laughs> know if there's any more other fruit to exist at Animal Crossing. That'll um, be the next expansion. Next expansion, apples. No, apples are in it. Oh. Apricots? No. Stra <laughs> <Dates>? Strawberry. <laughs> what grows on trees? And I know grapes don't grow. Or, uh, <laughs> but actually, most of those don't grow on trees. <laughs> oh, is this a tree-only thing? Are we not allowed to have bushes? Yeah, it's just trees. I, I think the only thing that wouldn't grow on trees would be bananas, right? Bananas grow on trees. What about cher No, cherries grow on trees. Okay, this isn't a conversation. No, this... <laughs> I'll look up later. I'll let you guys know what I find out. But uh, Animal Crossing is great. And worth picking up. And Ryan's friend code apparently is on Twitter. So you guys should all go and add Ryan so that you can chop down his trees and steal his fruit. Because that's uh, what I think the moral of the story is. But keep in mind, you can't be creepy and just add me. You have to like let me know you're adding me and then send me your 12-digit code. And I don't think it's creepy. I put it out there so people would add me and feel <laughs> You know, if if you shoot a random 12-digit number, I 
I know it's a 3DS friend code and you're not trying to, like, send me a secret message about <laughs> the Russians or something. I don't know. Who knows? So, The Last of Us. Yeah, this is what I was talking about when I said I was depressed. <laughs> After all of that, 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, we finally get to The Last of Us. So, um, I should probably preface this whole what we're playing section by saying I have not played anything. <laughs> I am taking care of a three-year-old this week while friends are out of town, so I was lucky to get away to do the show. So, Ryan, what did you think of The Last of Us? You're done now, right? You are finished the right. game? Oh, yeah, yeah, I finished the single player. Um, it's, it is as good as people say. It is, is a it really? I, yeah, I will start off, and, you know, people know how, how I feel about a lot of games, and, and I'm, I, I like a lot of games. So <laughs> you like all the games all the time. <laughs> not a lot of games, I, I don't hate any games, really, I'll, I just, you know, Which is, it's why we're up. such a good balance. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. so critical, <laughs> and you're just like, what do you mean? I love this game, and I was like, oh. I love everything. I just, I, I can be critical. I just, I, I, I like. You stuff. always fall on the side of, you know what? I love this game. And no one is surprised. I hate this, this, and this, but this one little thing that I love makes it worth the purchase, in my opinion. <laughs> um, like, but yeah, no, you can trust me and you can trust many other people on the internet that The Last of Us is a, is a really cool title. Um, I haven't touched the multiplayer yet. I hear the multiplayer is fantastic. So what is the idea behind multiplayer? I know you haven't actually played it yet, but is it a co-op type thing or is it a competitive thing? Because uh, from what I understand, The Last of Us in general is a, a apocalyptic survival game, right? So are you in multiplayer trying to beat other survivors to resources or are you trying to group up and find resources and kill zombies? Uh, are they actually zombies? Okay, well, let's... Let's tackle what I know about multiplayer, and then I'll, I'll okay, explain sorry. the whole monster zombies thing. Because that's that's a whole. I wanted to touch on that because, uh, as we all know, Jocelyn is is not, not a, a fan, fan of zombies. zombies, which is fine. Again, me being the nice person, I don't care if you're not a fan. Of them, that's all good. <laughs> but uh, the multiplayer, I got as far as importing my Facebook, um, which they made a point to say that it does not spam your wall. It's just to pull in names and photos, which oh, okay. Um, I got as far as. Uh, getting into the main screen, importing Facebook, and then it's there's two game modes from what I can tell, and you choose a side. You either choose the survivor or the hunters or the fireflies. Um, the hunters are sort of like your average sort of survivor type people, and the fireflies are this sort of organized militia that uh, believe in a cure to the virus, yeah. and that's their goal. As opposed to the other guys, their goal is just survive by any means. Um, and both those factions come into play uh, in the main game. But uh, in multiplayer, you choose a faction, and you stick with that faction until you complete the 25-day mission, I think they said. I don't know if that's real-time or not, but I think it's sort of like you get a certain amount of matches to meet a goal. Okay. Um, and I saw word of sort of collecting resources and collecting um, weapons and ammunition and all that fun stuff. And I, I believe it can't it's be real time because if it was real time, nobody would have finished a match yet. Because the Last of Us only came out a week ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it came out last Friday. Um, I don't think the matches are are very long. Uh, I know there are two types of matches, but again, I haven't I haven't jumped into one yet. Um, I want to, and I will I'll report back next week when I get a chance. But uh, it's it's it's. Not straight up deathmatch, which you look at Tomb Raider and it's like we got multiplayer and it's it's just deathmatch. I play one or two missions, I see that it's broken and never touch it again. <laughs> but, uh, this actually looks to be like something that could be a lot of fun, and and I've seen people saying they they've spent more or equal amount of time in multiplayer that they did in single player. So I'm looking forward to it. And the best part about multiplayer is when you import Facebook, it says like. Justin Moffat has gone hunting for raccoons, <laughs> and it shows your picture. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't know what it does, but I like the idea of you going out to hunt for raccoons for <laughs> for food for the group, right? Because I hear raccoons are delicious this time of year. Did you eat the Animal Crossing guy? <laughs> he, he's an asshole. Justin. <laughs> you would have ate him too. <laughs> tasted like money. No wonder his store is closed. <laughs> <laughs> well. 
<laughs> I'm just waiting for his kids to grow up so they can have more meat on their bones. But I digress. Yeah, uh, so yeah. my bad. That's <laughs> no, fine. I, that's hilarious that you made that connection. Um, uh, yeah, so in terms of the zombies... Um, okay, and I should just... I should definitely clarify this because it's not necessarily that I don't like zombies. It's that I think generally they're overdone and because they're so overdone, they're not done well. I mean, I like Walking Dead very much. Because, you know, there's a story outside of the zombies. I don't like Call of Duty zombies. I like, uh, what's another example of something I think is really good that zombies... Hmm. Okay, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. But I don't just generally look at something and go, Ugh, it's zombies, I hate it. Like, I'm not a huge... I don't think I would pick up Zombie U for the Wii U, but, I mean, at least that is a game made of zombies, not a game that they threw zombies in. Like, the whole... Red Dead Redemption having zombies in it? Like, what? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I, can, I can... And I'm... I kind of agree with you in that sense, where zombies, for me, I like zombies. Uh, I love Walking Dead. I like Dead. World War Z as well, the book. The book, World War Z. You, you like zombies when they're done right. Yes. And I, I say this all the time. I say that, uh, you know what? We need more of the Walking Dead zombie-type quality stuff. You know, it'd be really great if Dead Rising 3 could live up to The Walking Dead. It'd be really great if Walking Dead Survival Instinct could be as good as The Last of Us. You know, like, The Last of Us is the Walking Dead game that we wanted. Oh, good. Um, it is a zombie game. Yeah, zombie, but, you know, zombie's the easiest way to describe the monsters, but it is a zombie-type survival horror game where you are... It, it focuses on human drama. I was never afraid... When there were zombies on screen, I was afraid when humans were on screen oh, because cool. you feel you feel it like you're more in danger when there's humans on screen because they are they can see you, they have better weapons, they are vicious. They're uh, smart. They're smart. The zombies are sort of like they're blind from the get go, and uh, you know some are well, more. They have some weird kind of mm -hmm. growth mushroomy thing on their face. Right? Or yeah. the ones that I've seen anyway. So what exactly is like the disease or something that spreads and, and basically causes the end of humanity? Well, it, it's it's a virus that sort of sparks up. I'm not, I, I'll just preface this in saying like I'm not going to talk about the story at all because I found like from beginning to end to, to talk about any specifics kind of kind of ruins and ruins I, this, okay no that's fine ruins. i mean we're not we are not doing spoilers this is yeah, not, a, this I just is not a spoiler episode i mean i don't have a playstation so i'm not going to play it so that's why i'm so interested but um that being said yeah we're not gonna we're not gonna spoil the last of us it's only been out for a week but yeah tell i us what uh, you can yeah and, and i don't want to spoil it for you either because i think you should play it at some point if you were to get a ps4 and they have that cloud shit working you however come they up end up doing it grab the last of us and sort of throw it in the cloud or i don't know what they're going to do but um the zombies are sort of there's three types and the way you get infected by the virus is is uh by a bite so that's very zombie like mm -hmm. you get bit you turn and you turn or rather you die and then and then you turn but uh you also turn by getting caught in what they call these spores and there are certain sections in the game where you're going into a... You'll be in a hallway and all of a sudden you hear your character go, Oh, hell, spores are here. That's not what he sounds like. He has oh. a southern <laughs> accent, but I can't do it very well. Um, it's actually great because it's the same voice actor that does Booker DeWitt. Oh, and cool. You wouldn't even know it because he does kind of... He puts on an accent. It's really good. The voice acting and acting is superb, um, as is with every Naughty Dog game. But... Uh, yeah, it, uh, so yeah, the spores, you'll throw on this gas mask, and then you have to go through this, like, hazy section, and those spores will turn you as well, but there are, there are three types of zombies to, or, or infected. There's the runners, which have a better eyesight, and will come at, will run at you, and will come at you and, and start just, uh, beating on you. So those guys, you can take some hits from them. They'll grab you, too, which initiates, like, a, oh, mash the buttons, get off of me. <laughs> But you can also like you know punch them or or use your melee weapons or shoot them without having to worry about getting hit one hit kill. Mm -hmm. um, but the next level up is the um, sort of clickers they call them in the sense that their heads have sort of exploded 
and out comes these like little fungus mushroom type things and they're really creepy because you hear them just like clicking and they sort of just walk around and you know they're like clicking and I'm not going to imitate it because I'll look <laughs> ridiculous but they're just walking around and, and if you make a sudden movement or, or make a sound they will come at you and they are a one hit kill they grab you they bite you the encounter starts over <laughs> um, so that's why I was really af- I was more afraid uh, or no wait I, I didn't say that the infected don't scare me because really when you get bit the way they're set up is it's very like okay here's a scenario where there's a bunch of guys and the checkpoints are really nice so when you do get bit it's like crap I made a mistake and you start over um, and there are ways of sort of circumventing the one hit kill um, but that comes down the road with crafting and stuff But mm. um, and there is a further sort of enemy type um, what I would say is that is kind of a tank equivalent. Okay. Um, they're harder to take down, and and uh, they're also like a one hit kill in the sense if they grab you, they will tear you apart. Mm. Um, so, but, but there's the reason... a there's a crafting mechanic in there too. Yeah, the crafting which is makes really sense. Sweet. I mean, that's awesome in a survival so way... game. Yeah, exactly. It 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 really and that's where um sort of survival instinct went wrong where it just it tried to do the zombie action and didn't focus on the crafting um it, it the crafting was sort of this collect stuff outside the game but that was the one that focused on daryl right it was awful i played like an hour of it <laughs> um my brother bought it and i'm like you know what i kind of have to play this now and i played an hour of it it's like yeah i'm not even gonna slog through it so if anyone says i don't hate any games I hate <laughs> you hate that one, that one? really bad and I feel bad for him because he paid full price but uh, yeah this one has the way it's sort of broken down is um, there are uh, combat scenarios where you're either fighting infected or humans there are puzzle elements where you're manipulating the environment or you know trying to uh, uh, get across a, a ledge and you have to like you know get a ladder or something really basic uh, puzzle stuff but then there's also the survival stuff where you clear an area and the whole point of it is just to explore it and scavenge for supplies and it really plays to my whole I gotta get all the all the stuff get all the things in the entire area mm-hmm. um, so it plays up to your collectible s- sensibility and you can only carry so much at once and you can craft stuff and the way crafting works is uh say okay rag and alcohol make a med pack uh but also oh, okay ra- i can see that i was thinking molotov cocktail <laughs> yeah well that's the thing <laughs> a rag and alcohol also makes a molotov cocktail so i played on normal just to kind of experience it um and uh supposedly on further difficulties like you'll have to make a choice like am i gonna need a molotov cocktail here or am i gonna need a health pack you know, because those use the same materials, mm-hmm. right? And you can only carry so much, so you can only create so many. Um, so crafting is, is really neat. And you can make, like, uh, shivs, which you can use to, um, well, stab Stab dudes. people. <laughs> um, th- there's a whole stealth mechanic, too, where you're really encouraged to take as many guys out before you go guns blazing, because that saves on ammunition. ammunition. So if you go into an area, you can, you know, choke... Uh, runners and humans out but clickers you can't kill with one hit you have to use a shiv to kill them so uh, that sort of it builds into the crafting mentality and it gets a little uh, it goes further from there when you can start you know upgrading your weapons Mm -hmm. and making your melee stuff more powerful but it is a fantastic game in the sense that the story to me, it feels like it, it it went in a direction that I didn't see coming, you know, like... Well, that's good. Nobody and, likes a predictable story. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, they, they certainly could have gone predictable, and there's a lot of articles out there on the ending, and, and certainly don't spoil yourself, because the journey is really good, and uh, Naughty Dog is really good at, making, at building these characters up and making you really like them, um, so I won't spoil it, but I Overall, do recommend... Overall, worth the, worth the purchase price? Oh yeah. Go out and get it at sixty bucks. Yeah, sixty dollars, definitely worth it. This will probably be the last game you play on on PS3, and it is a wonderful sort of swan song. 
system. Yeah, it's so good. And um, if you're thinking of buying, if you're think, trying to think whether you want a PS4 or an Xbox One, and you sort of look at the, the studios, and you look at The Last of Us, which is done by Naughty Dog, a first-party Sony developer, it, it makes me really happy that I went with the PS4 because I want to play more of their games and I don't want to miss out on a single one of their titles. Like, mm-hmm. they make great games. No doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Totally worth it. Do you know what else is totally worth it, Ryan? What's that? My fantastically awesome doghouse system. What? I know, How much right? Am? <laughs> We really appreciate your continued support of our show, along with the support of our sponsor, Doghouse Systems. Use the code THEGAMERSIN to double your RAM when you purchase a new gaming rig. 4 becomes 8, 8 becomes 16, but 16 does not become 32, that would be crazy sauce. Head on over to doghousesystems.com and get your order on. Which brings us to Quickfire News. Uh, The truth behind Rayman Legends' delay is kind of what we expected. Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillemot told VentureBeat that the delay was in part due to the fear that the game would not sell enough units on Wii U. Poor Wii U. Oh, shit. (laughs) Explaining a little further, he said the game is going to... I was going to do a French accent, but I'm not. That's a wise choice. I I did it when I practiced this, but I should have learned my lesson. The game is going to be fantastic, and we didn't want those creators to wind up in a position where even after making a fantastic game, they didn't sell well enough. Ouch. Yeah. Halo's Reclaimer trilogy is now a saga. While speaking with GameSpot, Phil Spencer dropped the bomb that we may be seeing more than three new Halo games. Duh. Spencer was also Spencer also wouldn't confirm that Halo for Xbox One was in fact Halo 5, just that it is a legitimate version of Halo. An update on the story comes from 343 Industries, explaining that the Reclaimer saga will still have a beginning, middle, and end. However, there are many avenues for 343 to tell the Re- Reclaimer saga story so they don't want to limit themselves to only a trilogy. Kaching. Nintendo blames itself for poor Wii U sales. Iwata narrowed the issues down to poor marketing and a failure to offer consumers software to showcase the system. Basically, the Wii U needs Wii Sports and needs it now. Uh, Iwata also said they must focus on their own software before trying to win over third parties. This was this has been backed up by Ubisoft that in the backed up in the past by Ubisoft, where they said that when more Wii U's are sold, more exclusives will be made. Game sharing is coming soon to Steam. Prior to the whole Xbox One policy con- policy reversal. Small lines of code referring to game sharing from a new Steam beta were unearthed by NeoGAF users. Is that how you say it? NeoGAF or NeoGAF? Whatever. Same difference. You don't want to piss those guys off. (laughs) Isn't true. According to these bits of code, it seems that a shared game can only be played on one account at a time. Should the owner decide to step in, the guest will receive a message that it's time to step aside. No official word on when or if Steam will activate this feature. Which brings us to our Slash Loop plug. So you guys remember that fantabulous event that we are going to in Utah in two weeks' time called Nerdtacular? Well, there are some deals tied to that on the Slash Loot site. So if you head on over to SlashLoot.com, you can use the code N13DEAL for $2 off. And if you are going to the event in Utah, you can use the code N13PICK to get free shipping and pick up your order at Nerdtacular. And remember, there are shirts there from us, the gamers in. As well as, uh, shoot, the morning stream, and I think there's a final score shirt, there's an instant shirt, and there's a StarCast shirt. So you guys should head on over and see what else is there at SlashLoot.com. So that brings us to our topic of the week, which I accidentally dragged and dropped some quick fire into the topic of the <laughs> I week. Was that, was, that was accidental there. Sorry, guys. So, uh, yeah, basically, <laughs> shockingly, we are talking about, X- uh, not Xbox, well, Xbox. Sort of. Microsoft and their total reversal on the always online DRM thing. Yeah. What? <laughs> they did that. This is, that. okay, so not even two full weeks after E3 finished and they said, you know what, you want to play offline? You've got a 360 for that. Like, just let us have our always online Xbox One. You know, it's going to be great. You guys will love it. Just trust us. The biggest problem with 
the entire thing was that Microsoft never explained themselves well. They never gave us a solid reason for why our console would have to be on 24 hours. So no one, no one was interested. No one gave them a shot. They were just basically consumers were like, no, you don't trust us, which is exactly the reaction that Ryan and Ryan and I had to the E3 announcements from Xbox. I mean, like, if you just come out and say, you have to be online, we don't trust you to play your games and not pirate and everything else to every single one of your users, your users are going to be pissed off. So they've mm -hmm. responded by, Ryan? Yeah, I'm not going to say what everyone wants me to say, but I will break it down in saying that the uh, that they reversed a lot of their policies that were making people upset. So... No more always online, uh, no more 24-hour checks. Uh, discs will work the way they did with the 360. Uh, internet connection is only required for the initial setup because there will be a day one patch. Um, there was always a day one patch. They made that pretty clear uh, in their current messaging. They never said before there would be a Now, is that, that day one for the console or like the first time you play a game? The first time you boot up the console. Oh, so okay. when you set up the console, it'll it'll say, hey, you need an internet connection to actually get this thing running. So right. I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, to me, it doesn't matter, but I don't know if that flies in the face of people who don't have internet. I, I'm not that person, so I can't comment on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, all downloaded games will function the same when online and offline, so you'll be able to play your downloadable games. Mm -hmm. uh, no additional restrictions on trading and loaning discs renting, used games, all that fun stuff. And region locks have been dropped. Um, that's a thing for people. Uh, it's never been a thing for me, but I guess region lock I is sort of a big... Yeah, I don't travel enough, or I, I guess anything I buy, even online, is always through something like a Future Shop or EB or whatever. So, I mean, region locks was never really an issue for me. Mm -hmm. um, the chat room is just saying that uh, they... The one group that they really didn't please with this was the whole, you know, people that are ticked off about Connect having to be on and listening all the time. And the thing is, they're never mm -hmm. going to change that. I mean, yeah. they have come out and said in their first press conference when they were showing us the hardware that Connect is one third of their operating system, and the Connect technology is the thing that ties together the. Windows part and the Xbox part. So yeah. those two parts don't talk to each other without the Kinect technology in the middle. So you are never going to see them take the Kinect requirement out of the Xbox One. It's too integral to the way that the system works. So, I mean, it, it's I almost wish that there was a button on the front of the Kinect that you could just walk by and tap on and, and you know, so you had the choice to have it on or off. But, I mean, yeah. you know, whatever. It is what it is. That's the, the decision that they made. I understand where they're going with the Kinect because I felt that in the hardware presentation they gave us a couple of weeks before E3, they were very specific with how everything worked and why. You know, mm -hmm. they explained the operating system well, they explained the hardware well, they explained the Kinect functionality well. And so all of that I was kind of like, eh, I'm not really a huge fan of Microsoft having something in my living room that is always on and mm -hmm. able to record, whether that's audio or video. You know, that, that does give me a little bit of weirdness. But <sighs> at the same time... You know, like, I, I understood what they were doing and that they were trying to give us a better experience. But everything they announced at E3, the no renting games, no used games, DRM, this, that, and the other thing, like, all of this crap, they just said, this is what we're doing because we said so. You know, mm -hmm. no benefits to the consumer, no benefits to anybody except for Microsoft. And it's just like, you know, no, no. Yeah. Um, in terms of the Connect thing, I might just be naive or you know nice but i don't feel like it like this the privacy thing is a big deal like am i really i know pri people say like once you give up privacy then it leads to worse you know things you give up but well are yeah, they really problem, spying on me like, well no no like spying. my problem is not necessarily with Microsoft specifically. My mm -hmm. problem is that there needs to be a whole hell of a lot of trust between you and a company 
for them to like for you to trust them to protect your privacy and it's not just from like protecting my privacy from them making sure they're using my data properly it's that I trust their systems or don't trust their systems enough not to get hacked because uh -huh. if Microsoft gets the shit hacked out of them and you know somehow that the network gets opened up to hackers then all of a sudden I'm sitting in my underwear on the couch playing video games and I'm all over the internet because you know the they broke into the network they were you know listening in on my connect or whatever you know it's just it's yeah. the always on hackability of a device that I mean right. you know when I when I leave my computer I don't leave my webcam on I don't leave my mic on no, you know but, but so the That's... thing is, is that uh, those hackers are going to find, they, yeah, they might get a photo of, of you playing in your underwear, but they're going to get a lot more. That's important to me, mister. I, I don't want photos of me in my underwear but I'm floating just around the, hackers, the internet. The hackers are going to want to go through it because there's just going to be so many people like me in my underwear <laughs> playing. It's like, oh, it's not worth, let's, let's just throw these all out, you know. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see that. Even if there's a Luigi hat involved, not <laughs> happening. Um, no, I agree with you. Yeah, that that is a valid point that I don't think anyone's brought up because usually people are just like, prism, government. Yeah, no, that's... Stunts. And it just, it really weirds me out. But And I'm not saying that, like, you know, I, there are plenty of, like, hacktivist-type people and there's all different kinds of hackers, you know. Not everyone who identifies themselves as a hacker is that kind of a person that would, you know, try to exploit the random gamer sitting on the couch. Usually they're going after a company or they're going after, you know, like a big person who's, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're not going after me specifically anyways. So it's, getting your information. Yeah. You get Microsoft. No, I, I get that. that so, I mean, like it is, it is a small risk. It is a calculated risk, but it's a risk that I am just not necessarily comfortable with. Uh, like I said, if there was a hardwired button, I would feel better. Well, they they have like yeah, I can see that. But they have said that they you will be able to lock down what it can do in the software. But I highly doubt those software switches will uh, m make people happy um, for hacking reasons, but also for. I feel weird saying, "Oh, well, they'll hack it," because I don't know if they'll be able to hack it. So I feel like I'm I'm pulling a grandma and saying. You know, like, oh, what if they hack my emails? <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? I just, I don't know how hacking works, so I don't know whether they'd be actually be able to get in there, but I guess we can just assume the worst because it is Microsoft. But I, 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 yeah, I think with the Connect, you know, just friggin' throw a blanket over it. <laughs> but know, then it like, can still uh, hear me. Clear. Then t learn a different language. I don't know. Cream. You gotta learn a different language than the internet speaks. Yeah, Way you, to go, you, Peterborough. Uh, you just, uh, <laughs> is it, uh, speak to Thraki. That, that sounds a little more. <laughs> that was kind of Russian. <laughs> What's that Star Trek language? Klingon? Klingon, yeah. It sounds a little bit like that, but you just learn to Thraki or, uh, Elf <laughs> The tongue. chat room says use binary speak. One one zero one zero one one. <laughs> That's how hackers talk to each other. That's a good idea. They, yeah. No. Okay. Well. All right. So let's get back to what they actually did get rid of. So yeah. the one thing that I know Ryan specifically was very upset about was the renting games. So we've got renting games back, but we also, in all of this, lost a couple of things. So we lost disc free play, which I mean. Again, this is one feature that, I mean, I read this whole big, huge, long, gut-spilling blog from someone who works at Microsoft who basically was uh, on the team who was responsible for all of this, the, the whole Xbox One sharing type online 24-hour interface thing. Um, and he basically said, yes, like, we did not explain ourselves, and two of the things that we've had to disable as part of the whole getting rid of the 24-hour requirement are the disc-free play and the family sharing, family game sharing plan, yeah. which is not actually as awesome as it originally sounded. When, you know, sharing a game with 10 of your friends, mm -hmm. 
sounds awesome because then I could be like, oh my god, Ryan, I'm playing this awesome game. I'm going to share it with you because you're in my family, you know, because none of my family other than my brother actually game. So that was my first thought is I was like, well, I don't have 10 family people who I could share with, but I have 10 very good friends that I could share with. So, you, you know, I would count you in my family sharing plan. And then so I'm like, oh, play this game. Well, it turns out that it's a half an hour to an hour long demo. Oh, they they actually came, went back. I mean, it doesn't mean anything now, but uh, one of the main engineers on Twitter had said that it was full shared game. So I know that was a rumor that was out there, but I, be, I can't remember the guy's name. Ah, Adam something. Mm -hmm. um, but he did confirm that that it would have been, like, actual game sharing. Um, Maybe it was that, because I know that there was, after a certain amount of time and a short amount of time, there was a prompt to buy the game. So I'm, I'm not clear 100% on if it was... I mean, it's gone now anyway, so it doesn't really yeah. matter. But uh, Aaron, uh, look up Aaron Greenberg on Twitter, and, and he's sort of been sort of debunking a lot of these I mean again he can pretty much say whatever he wants now cuz yeah cuz it's gone so yeah but basically um the whole idea was all of this was supposed to help publishers get the industry back on track because you know basically they're blaming used games for the decline of the industry which I still call bullshit on because I mean like they're like oh people don't understand that the money that goes into these things is just the same as blockbuster movies and blah 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 and I'm like yeah but a blockbuster movie I pay ten dollars for if I go see it in the theater and then thirty dollars for if I buy it on blu-ray and a game costs me six times that or double that you know like just come on so anyways I was thinking that the whole family sharing plan thing that's if I have say Red Dead Redemption 2 <laughs> I don't know if there's gonna be a Red Dead Redemption 2 but I have I have Red Dead on my Xbox one I want to share it with Ryan and I want to share it with Joel and my brother and over and over and over again if they're full shared games then that one copy of Red Dead I have just shared to 10 other people if I sold that one copy of Red Dead to GameStop, they could re like it would take a really long time for that game to go through 10 people at a GameStop. If it ever did, you know, like I would be shocked if a used copy of a game went back to a GameStop again more than maybe once or twice. Like I don't think I've ever taken a used game back to a GameStop. You don't get anything for them. By the time they're in my used game price range, which is usually in and around 30 bucks. I don't buy used games unless they're about half price. Um, you know, like, it's too old to get anything. You might get five bucks, five or ten, towards yeah. other game titles. So, I mean, what's the point? There isn't any. You've already got a cheap game, so, you know, you keep it, you play it. That's two people. The original purchaser and me, the used game purchaser. If you have a family sharing plan of ten people, like, I mean, there's the whole six degrees of separation idea basically means that, you know, like if everybody had 10 friends and we don't duplicate friends, soon enough we're going to be able to just cover the whole world and buy like 10 copies of a game and then just share it around the whole world. Done. <laughs> well, I mean, um, and we say these, these policies, like these features that were launch features with the old um, policies in place, they are not gone forever. They have said that they're going to be revised. Um, and won't be available at launch. I mean, I think disc free play is sort of off the table and then until they sort of say, hey, when you buy a, a disc, you can, you know, t attach it to your account, you know, and then it becomes like it was before, then it becomes a digital product. Um, but the online library is sort of working the same way in the sense that when you log on to somebody else's console, you can play games that you purchased uh, on, on your console as a digital download. So that functionality is still there, and that's really great because then if I buy like an XBLA game, or sorry, like a, a smaller game, I can play it wherever I want right. as long as I'm logged in. But uh, the family game sharing plan, there's nothing stopping them from implementing it on digital purchases. And really, all these... I don't really understand why they took it away. I mean... Well, they they took it away because just it's to be jerks, like, just to be like, fine, you want us to take maybe. away the twenty four hour requirement and all the DRM, and you want to be able to rent games? Fine, you can't have family sharing. Ha! <laughs> if I had to make a guess, uh, I would think that because of these changes, they have to do a little a little work on the back end, and uh, I'm maybe sure that's what it is. 
yeah, I mean, who knows, really? And uh, all the, they've said that Xbox Live is something that will evolve over time. I mean, look what it was when the Xbox came out, and look what it is now. I mean, there are going to be a lot of changes and a lot of new policies put in place. Mm-hmm. And Microsoft has said from the beginning that all these changes are to push consoles towards a digital future. So there's already many benefits to buying digital things on the Xbox One as opposed to disc copies. Mm -hmm. But now they've pretty much said, okay, you want your discs to work the way they did before? They are going to work the way they did before. And that's it. I think that my biggest problem with Microsoft trying to push a digital future is the reason that digital works on my PC is because Mm -hmm. I have services like, um, not services like Blizzard, services like Steam that offer me sales and reasons to buy cheaper. I mean, if I can have a box and a disc and some cool art for the exact same price as what I'm going to get if I download it digitally, I'm going to go buy the box because you're getting more for your money. I Like, Mm -hmm. there's there's nothing else to it, right? And, you know, the reason that PC gaming works is because, like I said, Steam sales... Blizzard sales, like, I don't think I have ever seen a major title go on sale on my Xbox. Like, I was looking for Mass Effect to download, um, what was that, probably six months ago? The freaking thing is still $30. That came out in 2007? So, we're talking a six-year-old game, and they're selling it for $30. they are selling it brand new, with a box and a disc, down at EB, for, like, $14.99. $14.99. So, Hell, you can buy the trilogy for $30. Well, you can buy the trilogy for $30, exactly. So, I mean, Microsoft has not shown me that they have the ability to make a digital future work. Maybe if they'd done better with the Xbox 360 in the past, I would trust them more and be like, okay, you know, I'm willing to trade some of these, I guess, I'm willing to give you control if mm-hmm. you show me a reason why, if that's, you know, sales or saving the planet even. If somebody came out and said, well, if we don't make discs, then, you know, we don't have to, I don't know, kill the whales for their blubber to make plastic or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but your concerns are things that they wouldn't have been able to prove until launch. You know, like, I mean, theoretically, they could say, like, okay, this is what we're doing, and if you buy a disc, if you buy a disc version, it's 60 if you buy a digital version, it's 10 bucks off. Well, like, but that's is what that I'm saying. You, like... that digital versions of games have been available yeah. through the Xbox marketplace mm-hmm. for as long as I've had an Xbox. But I've never seen sales on the Xbox marketplace on major AAA titles. You know, every once right. in a while there's sales on indie games, but most of the time it's not AAA stuff. Or if it is, it's not marketed well, and you don't know about it. But that's the thing, is that that's something they wouldn't have been able to showcase six months before launch. Like, they can't talk about sales on games. No, I know, but I'm saying that they've had that digital... uh, They've had games in the digital space available for a very long time. Years. So if they were going to do something as a company to make me move towards digital stuff, they could have done that years ago. They could have shown me that, you know, like... We can give you sales, or we can give you X, Y, and Z that's going to make you want to go digital. You know, faster games because they're straight on your hard drive instead of spinning on a disc or, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever their reasons are for pushing for a digital future outside Mm -hmm. of protecting IP and, you know, accusing me of piracy. But, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Like, they theoretically could have taken a hit on the Xbox to show that, you know, show us gamers that they're capable of offering sales. But um, I think with the Xbox One, they were sort of, again, being selfish and saying, like, okay, the only way we're going to do these sales is by cutting the disc based market off mm-hmm. at the knees. Yeah. You know, we have to do that first before we can have Steam like sales. And that's basically what a lot of. Um, supporters of Microsoft and also people working at Microsoft have come out in saying, not publicly, but anonymously saying that we can't have Steam sales until this disc-based market starts to correct itself. That's why the policy is there. Which again, is also bullshit. They do it on PC all the time. You can buy a boxed version of Pandaria for... 30 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever it is in store or you can go to the blizzard store download it digitally and you can get it for 10 or 15 bucks you know like you can't say that 
discs hinder your ability to offer sales. The inability to offer sales is because you're Microsoft and you want my money and all of my money. That's well, the only took, thing hindering you. <laughs> it took six years for Steam to get where it is today. Like, I think it's only been the last couple years where I've been really getting all my PC games at least like 10 to $15 off at launch. Mm -hmm. the, it, it would have been, a, yeah, about a year. I think the first game I bought, I pre-ordered from Green Man Gaming at like 15 bucks off was Darksiders 2. Mm -hmm. So Steam took a long time to get there, and I feel as... I, Part of me is like, I understand that a lot of people wanted to see these changes, and that's great. But the other part of me kind of just wanted to see where it would have went. And I've heard crazy stories, people saying, like, this is a publicity stunt, and they did this on purpose. And I think that's bullshit. Well, yeah. But... And the thing is, like, it, all the DRM stuff, as, as far as I know, unless this has changed as well, is still all up to the game publishers right? So it's not like they're completely getting rid of it or disabling it or whatever. What they're getting rid of is Microsoft's requirement to be online once every 24 hours. They're not actually getting rid of the background stuff that allows for things like online passes or, you know, whatever they're going to do. They're still yeah. leaving that all up, which is exactly the same as what they're doing on the PS4. The PS4 is doing the same thing, saying, yeah, if you want to have DRM, Mr. Publisher, you go right ahead. It's built into our system. We just don't enable it, you know? So, I mean, yeah. everybody really was ragging on Microsoft for the DRM thing. And it's like, well, really, Sony's doing the same thing. Sony's just not requiring an internet connection. So, I mean. Yeah. So does this sort of change your opinion on the Xbox? I mean, do you feel like these changes make you want to go out and pre-order? Like, all the, the main... The thing is, I, I was thinking said. about this before the show, and, mm -hmm. I mean, I did fall down on the side of the PS4, and I think that that was partially because I don't have a PS3, so it would be really nice to have access to the things that Sony Worldwide has coming down the pipe. Right. So, I mean, but at the same time, I felt like the PS4 was more of the same, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But I no. found that, like, whether I like it or not, you know, whether I think I will use the features or not, at least the Xbox One did seem to be a different. It was a departure from what Microsoft had been doing. There was a lot of um, uh, integration of things like Twitch. You know, there was mm -hmm. also a whole lot of crap that I'll never look twice at, like all the TV and sports stuff. But that's only because I'm 99% sure it's not going to work for me anyway because I'm a cable cutter. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I can see where, what they're trying, whether it's going to work or not. It's just, it's going to be interesting to see, and I'm glad that somebody is doing something. I'm glad it's not Xbox 360 the second, you know? It does seem yeah. to be different enough. The Kinect integration is, again, different enough. So I want to see where the Xbox One is going to go. The PlayStation, I feel like, is a safer bet. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still not sold on either one of them. I really think that I'm just going to stick with my PC. I love my PC. Mm. And, and, I mean, yeah, PCs are... I, I almost said that... Well, the PC sort of evolves in the same way that the consoles are evolving in the sense that they're just getting better hardware. But I think the PC is also seeing a lot of these small little indie weird titles. Like a lot of the weirdest titles I've played have come out exclusively to the PC, right? Mm -hmm. But I think where, where the PS4 is going right on that boat is they're seeing that trend on the PC and saying, hey, we can get these indies too. Like a lot of those indie developers had said it took a couple weeks to get our game running on the PS4 from mm -hmm. PC code. Yeah. So that's really enlightening to me. And, and really when it comes down to it, if they had announced this policy change and there's a new Fable game at launch because, hey, you guys wanted a good game at launch, I probably would have... I probably wouldn't have done anything, but I would have <laughs> been, damn, I wish I hadn't pre-ordered the PS4 because now I'm a little conflicted. Yeah. Um, I think that that's really what it's going to come down to is for one of the two systems to come mm -hmm. out with a title that I can't live without, you know? And I don't know what that's going to be. It could be a Fable game for the Xbox One. It could be... 
I don't even know what it would be on the PS4 because I'm not familiar. Infamous looks really good. Yeah, I know, but at the same oh, time, yeah. I wasn't that sold on it. It looked like a fun game, but mm. I found the, the main character, the, you know, like, was it, like, graffiti painting teenage... Voiced by Troy Baker. Rebel. Rebel. Uh, That's the word I'm looking for. He Booker he looked DeWitt. kind of annoying. <laughs> so Oh, yeah. he's not annoying. It's Booker DeWitt. <laughs> He's in everything now. Yeah, really. That's only because you know who he is now. That's not because he w didn't do anything before he was in no, Bioshock. <laughs> you're right. He he was I, I he was on my radar before that, and he was the hey, you're gonna be the next Nolan North in the sense that you're in everything. <laughs> Nolan North is still in every. I'm waiting for the game where Nolan North and Troy Baker are in the same game playing like dual main characters, <laughs> and that no better idea. One of them's the good guy, and one of them's the bad guy. And they just, they voice actor each other to as death. <laughs> fighting. I think that would be great. Make it happen, Sony. Yeah. So, you know, like, I don't know what the, it might be a new Uncharted, because that was the thing on PlayStation that I really felt that I missed out on was the Uncharted franchise. So right. it might be a new Uncharted game that gets me to go over to PlayStation. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, as long as I can, as long as there's something I I can't like I can live without all these games and I can get everything else I really want to play on PC then because a lot of the Xbox ones and we covered this in our E3 coverage a lot of the Xbox titles are also available on PC it's a console exclusive but it is not exclusive exclusive it's exclusive to Microsoft platforms you could say in that you know it's exclusive to PC not available on Mac it's a, exclusive to the Xbox One, not available on PS4, you know, but it's still available to me on a machine I already own. So in terms of the price point difference, I mean, I don't really care. You know, the, the hundred dollars, yeah. well, the hundred dollars, I mean, it, the PlayStation doesn't come with their motion control eye thing. Yeah. So, I mean, when it really comes down to it, you're going to get close to that hundred dollars just picking up all of the hardware. So... You know, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, what, what about you? Have you have you changed your mind? Uh, no. I mean, I, I pre-ordered my PS4. I'm, I'm fairly confident that I'm going to enjoy it right off the bat. And I mean, I I've, I've been talking about this a lot when it comes to Microsoft, and that I'm kind of I'm a little bummed by the by the policy change. I would have liked to see where it went, but mm -hmm. in the end, I think both consoles are going to be making changes to their po policies throughout the next five years in good ways to get closer to a digital only future or at least make it more enticing to buy digital only mm -hmm. um but they won't be like always online 24 hour blah 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 all, the, all those things that people hated yeah um but the in terms of the price difference i think that uh for those bitching about the connect buy a ps4 it doesn't come with the connect and you save 100 bucks but when you look at microsoft they have the perfect opportunity to cut that price by a hundred dollars yeah you know so sony doesn't quite have that wiggle room in the sense that 400 bucks is already kind of low probably you know? as low as they can go yeah at least without you know losing a lot of money mm -hmm. i'm sure they're losing money now but um yeah microsoft can probably do a price cut if they really need to but i saw a news article linked by the same Microsoft executive that, due to the policy changes, their pre-orders on Amazon have quickly shot up above the PS4. So, mm. I don't think that says much, but it's nice to see that they are getting the pre-orders now. So. Yeah. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up our show for tonight. So you can visit us on the web at gamersandpodcast.com or email us at info at gamersandpodcast.com. You can find us on AMOVE TV along with other fabulous podcasts, including StarCast, Campaign Roundtable, Biggest Fan, and This Week in Blizz. You can follow us on Twitter. You can find me, Jocelyn, at GIS Gamer. You can find Ryan at R. Murphy. And don't forget to follow the show at The Gamers Inn. You can also find us on Facebook and Google+. Before we go, I just want to give a quick shout-out and thank you to my brother Greg for creating our awesome music you can find him on twitter at sounds influence we would also like to thank joel duggan of starcrossed online who drew our twitter avatars and created our logo you can find him on twitter at joel duggan or read his comic at starcrossedonline.com so thanks for staying at the gamers inn and remember to tune in next week